thank you, uh, Esan, okay, for uh, the generous introduction, and my favorite panelists, Dr. Uh, Azar Ibrahim. Uh, great to meet you back, although it's just online. Okay, uh, and I'd like to thank uh, the IRF and especially Dr. Ahmad Farouk for extending the invitation uh, to me to speak uh, on this topic of COVID-19 and uh, xenophobia. Okay, and uh, I'd like to welcome also to all the uh, audience okay, uh, to this webinar uh, from uh, all over uh, the world. So, Okay, um, I've prepared uh, some slides okay, which I'll uh, go through okay, and the uh, topic uh, given uh, to us was uh, COVID-19 and the rise of uh, xenophobia, okay, analysis and solution. Okay, I'll be uh, frank that I don't have really, in, I don't have really much in terms of a solution, and perhaps because I'm I'm given the task of being the first uh, speaker, so I'll more or less focus myself on the analysis. Okay, and I'll invite uh, Dr. Azhar later to come up with uh, most of the uh, solution. Okay, this problem of xenophobia. Okay, uh, I think it has been uh, a long recurring uh, problem and it's uh, not uncommon uh, to happen okay, during uh, trying times, whether it's in times of economic depression or in times of health crisis, uh, for instance, during a pandemic like what we are experiencing uh, today. Okay, the abstract. And one thing I'd like to emphasize about this, this abstract is uh, a fact which is overlooked by many of us. The fact that the stigma caused by social uh, ostracization uh, or dislocation, okay, the uh, pressure upon the victims can be more dangerous than the virus itself. Okay, at a time of prevailing uh, economic okay, and also social uncertainty, many people are being pressured, are being left uh, without uh, work. Okay, and, and the focus of the authorities are mostly on the physical health okay, of uh, the population. Uh, neglecting the fact that the societal psychological pressures can even be more overwhelming than the uh, physical effects, the okay, physical implications okay, of the pandemic. And it can last a longer time. This pandemic historically might take uh, two, three or five years but okay, the psychological implication, okay, the ostracization that can happen as a result or during accompanying the pandemic can last a lifetime. So let's uh, go to xenophobia. If you look at uh, linguistically, it's simply fear or hatred or dislike of aliens. Aliens here not, mean, not meaning aliens from Mars or uh, or the sun, but foreigners. Okay, uh, but the underlying okay, uh, issue or problem with xenophobia is not uh, hatred or fear of uh, different nationalities or foreigners itself, but it's more of racism, I would say. Okay, and racism is what underlies xenophobia and makes it uh, particularly poisonous. 
Yeah, racism can be against your fellow countrymen. Okay, although xenophobia, we might understand it as a uh, uh, fear or dislike of different nationality, but racism can happen even among fellow countrymen, okay, among co-religionists, okay, like what ha what has happened between the Malay Muslim community and the Rohingyas, both are Muslim communities. So it's mainly a process of otherization. You create a particular other in order to uh, hate or dislike and it leads to ostracization, uh, social and economic uh, boycott and in the, ex in the most extreme of cases, it leads to genocide, massacres, okay, which in the in medieval times okay, have often happened, which, which, which I'll point out okay, uh, afterwards. Okay, what is particularly pernicious about racism, okay, it legitimizes notions of superiority of human being. But this superiority is not based on something people work for, but something which is natural and God-given. Skin color, for instance, okay, based on phenotype of physical or observable attributes, uh, features, Okay, how your body looks like, okay, how your eyes look like. And this type of racism historically okay, has nurtured a supremacist culture. Okay, and uh, uh, for instance, uh, what caused uh, World War II, for instance, okay, one of the main reasons was uh, the rise of Nazism in Germany which was based on a supremacist uh, culture of the uh, Germans of uh, looking at, the, at themselves as a pure Aryans. And it led to uh, anti-Semitism anti -Semitism, okay, and the uh, gassing of the Jews, okay, the widespread, widespread killing of the Jews. So the uh, great problem in the, in the most extreme of cases Okay, racism can lead to physical violence, even until the modern times and even until recently. Many people have seen, okay, uh, in the USA, okay, uh, what happened after George Floyd, for instance, was uh, murdered okay, uh, by a, a policeman. Okay, even though I don't know whether it's correct to term it xenophobia, Okay, but a diff in, in the USA, for instance, because of the racial problem, they, uh, the uh, black Americans, they are in one nation. The white Americans are in one nation. The Latino uh, Americans are in one nation. So it's a state with different nations. Okay, and similarly, in, 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 in Malaysia, between the Malay Muslim community, okay, the Malaysian Indian community, the Malaysian Chinese community, Okay, all live in Malaysia, a state with different nations. Okay, uh, with, uh, with each communities having uh, different uh, aspirations, uh, look at different figures, okay, which they uh, admire, okay, and so on with uh, um, admiring different histories. Okay, and this uh, points out to uh, partial failure. Okay, of nation building. And I would say that a lot of countries uh, with plural societies okay, uh, I mean, have been grappling with this uh, problem for some time, okay, especially uh, after uh, World War II in the post-Second World War uh, order. Okay, so there is one uh, term okay, underlying racism. It was racism Okay, which undergirded uh, colonialism, the colonial project okay, of um, subjugating uh, people uh, with uh, the non-white uh, skin color in Africa, in Asia, and so on. There is one term okay, which was uh, uh, carved, a white man's burden, okay, which was actually a title of a poem uh, by Rudyard Kipling. Okay, one of the uh, great British 
uh, storytellers and novelists, uh, poets who won the Nobel Prize in literature, okay, but, but also regarded as an arch imperialist. And some and many people also call him a racist. Okay, then, okay, I mean, okay, as a political scientist, okay, I, I see the COVID-19 weapon, you can, you can, you can uh, view it, or you have different viewpoints about whether it's a bioweapon or, uh, or a political weapon. There is much speculation in conspiracy theories whether it's a bioweapon or not, whether it was uh, manufactured, for instance, in the Wuhan Institute of Virology, okay, in Wuhan, China, and whether it was deliberate, uh, which many right-wing uh, activists or right-wing militants okay, in the uh, Western world, some of them believe that it was a deliberate intention okay, by uh, China okay, in their mission to dominate the world. We look at history, Okay, the fact that um, pandemics or germs, viruses, bacteria was used as a political weapon, okay, we can uh, see it in, in history. Okay, and I've uh, given here some instances uh, from uh, the 14th century, okay, uh, when there was a siege of the uh, Kaffa city in Ukraine, and actually uh, there was a plague then, uh, which caused the Black Death. Okay, and one of, and the corpses of victims of the plague were used as a bioweapon. And then one of the main reasons for the extinction of some of the Indian tribes in New World, okay, in America, was because of smallpox. Okay, there's a reference here, a uh, great article okay, in the Wall Street Journal on 22nd uh, February on germs that transform history. Okay, you can uh, read that and uh, we can discover that the majority of Indians actually died on their beds because of smallpox rather than on battlefield okay, against the uh, whites. So the question is, is whether it was deliberate or not. Uh, okay, then there are differences of, of uh, opinions. So whether COVID-19 is a bioweapon is still disputed. Okay, uh, there are several versions of uh, things, okay, whether it was deliberately uh, manufactured and what, what was the intention. Okay, uh, but the fact that uh, right-wing politicians especially use COVID weapon as a political weapon, okay, that is undisputed. Okay, as uh, Ehsan mentioned in, in the introduction uh, today, uh, Trump used it, okay, uh, uh, calling uh, COVID-19 Chinese uh, viruses. And of course, the USA now is struggling okay, to catch up with uh, China and and China is rising fast, okay, in terms of um, establishing itself as a as the main global uh, power, okay, especially with the arrival of a five G, okay, and the technology actually uh, mastered and also um, mainly uh, dominated by China via Huawei and, and other high tech companies have surpassed. The, uh, the uh, capacity of the USA, who previously dominated 4G. Okay, and then in India also, we see the case of uh, COVID-19 being used by the right-wing uh, BJP government under uh, President uh, Modi, who accused okay, the Indian Muslims of deliberately infecting uh, the uh, in Indian uh, nation, okay, uh, in order to advance uh, Islamic causes, and the Tablighi uh, Jamaat okay, became uh, was one of the victims of uh, vilification okay, in the Indian, not just social media, but even the uh, state-dominated uh, mainstream media. 
if you look at history, okay, minorities and especially vulnerable minorities have been the victims of uh, such epidemics okay, or pandemics. In the 14th century, uh, the Black Death, which I mentioned just now, Jews were blamed and were massacred. Okay, uh, genocide happened in uh, Europe especially the, during the uh, Black Death, which caused uh, the death of one third of Europe's uh, population. And then in USA especially, uh, there was in the 19th century, there was the typhoid outbreak, Irish immigrants, uh, were blamed, uh, cholera outbra outbreak, and cholera is said to be endemic to the Ganges River in India. And then the HIV outbreak also were initially blamed on the Haitian Americans. The star SARS outbreak blamed on the uh, Chinese Americans, the swine flu outbreak, the Ebola outbreak, and now we have the COVID-19 the COVID-19 uh, outbreak where East Asians have been uh, victimized and especially those well, with a Chinese look, not necessarily Chinese. Okay, for instance, Koreans or Japanese or Singaporeans. Okay, and funny enough, okay, in North America, in Canada, for instance, some Inuits, you know, Inuits, Inuits are Eskimos. Uh, they are indigenous to Canada, okay, far before the uh, white people came and colonized uh, North America. And yet, some of them have the Chinese look. Even they have been stigmatized and discriminated against. Okay, in some uh, cases in uh, Canada, okay, in North America, we have some uh, gruesome pictures okay, from the. Uh, you can easily outsource. You can easily source it from the internet. Okay, on uh, what are the, what has happened during pandemics uh, in the past. Okay, and this is a, a picture depicting the public burning of Jews. Okay, um, and uh, what happened in Basel in Switzerland uh, in 1349, and a month later in Strasbourg in France, where uh, Jews were uh, massacred. Okay, because they were blamed for causing the Black Death, and they were blamed uh, because their death rates were lower than the non-Jews. And also they were accused of infecting, deliberately infecting the wells okay, of the uh, people. So come COVID-19, it's a resurrection of the yellow peril, okay, the danger of people with uh, yellow color skin, okay, which um, is a euphemism or uh, a term uh, which is used Okay, to describe uh, East Asians. And we see several uh, instances in American history, okay, uh, especially we have the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882, okay, which barred immigration from uh, China. Okay, and then uh, one Chinatown, for instance, full Chinatown was burned, raised to the ground okay, just because uh, one inhabitant was uh, accused of being, being of having leprosy. Okay, in uh, leprosy is in uh, Malay Kusta. Okay, and you can look at uh, this article. Okay, uh, of this uh, professor saying that you know burning down Chinatowns was a typical sort of activity. Okay, and this sort of racism, even just a hundred years ago in America. Okay, happened on a wide scale, not just against Chinese, but even 100 years ago, blacks were actually a lynch, okay, still lynch uh, on a wide scale okay, in uh, Southern America, okay, in the southern states of uh, USA. So Trump labels this the Chinese virus, and that okay, has emboldened racist, emboldened uh, white Anglo-Saxon was uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant uh, nationalists, okay, uh, and the, the inheritors of the Ku Klux Klan um, tradition, and this has caused a spike in uh, anti-Asian, especially anti-Chinese, uh, hate crimes, 
Okay, you can actually uh, Google through it. There are so many videos out there committed not just by the white Americans against the Asian Americans, but even by the African Americans who are themselves discriminated. Okay, on uh, in in other um, in um, situations of life, they themselves they okay, have um, in, uh, victimized or stigmatized the Asian Americans. So these are some cartoons from the colonial age where. You know, this drove uh, xenophobia, xenophobic racism, okay, where the white man um, is uh, I mean, obsessed with his duty of civilize, civilizing uh, other uh, nations or uh, other people, of uh, colored peoples especially. And look at the right uh, cartoon, where, you know, the, intro the introduction of soap, you know, this question of hygiene, this question that uh, the non-white people are, are somewhat less hygienic okay, uh, than the whites. The introduction of soap is uh, considered okay, as a great contribution of the uh, white people to the non-white civilizations. And we have this, of course, even in uh, this country okay, where we consider immigrants or people of certain uh, ethnicity allegedly unhygienic. We even have religious preachers. Okay, who uh, once uh, mentioned these things. So the, this is the first two uh, stanzas okay, of the uh, Rudyard Kipling's uh, White Man Burdens uh, poem. And look, just look at some of, uh, I'd like to emphasize some of the words which he has chosen. Okay, uh, Southern peoples, half devil and half child. Okay, and uh, to take up the white man's uh, burden to be the threat of terror. And look at what, what we have encountered 80 years uh, okay, later, 100 years later, after uh, this uh, poem was written. Okay, one of the main uh, allegations against the uh, people of color is that they are terrorists. Okay, uh, and a way which I think has until now uh, alluded uh, Malaysia is uh, on, a, on a vast scale, but on a small scale, there are okay, these instances of dehumanization. Okay, and there's a source which I quote here, okay, uh, which uh, in, 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 in which these two scholars they have studied genocide. Okay, and dehumanizing the other, okay, uh, dehumanizing a community which you look down upon is a precursor to widespread violence. And we should always be alarmed when there are signs of this. The other group members, they write, are uh, um, conceived as pigs, rats, maggots, cockroaches, and these and are, are labeled with disgusting uh, characteristics. Okay. Even the Nazis frame Jews as what? Parasites, excrement, plague, tuberculosis. Uh, we have the example of the Rwandan genocide in Africa, where the Hutu, Hutu extremists, they regularly uh, call the uh, Tutsis with cockroaches. They call them cockroaches, call them insects. The Bali bomber Mokhlas, okay, uh, whose target was the Australian tourists, called Westerners dirty animals, insects that need to be wiped out. So what do, we what do we discover here in Malaysia in terms of the social media? The terms such as da pigs okay, is used regularly, especially against uh, the AP and some Chinese, ethnic Chinese politicians, Anjing Naraka Jahanam. And I get uh, count uh, countless WhatsApp messages Okay, in Malay-centric groups uh, using these uh, sort of uh, terms. Okay, and uh, okay, at the bottom there is one instance of a WhatsApp message I uh, received in my phone on uh, 19 June, or oh, that was just yesterday. Okay, in fact, warning uh, some uh, okay, some people that they might be uh, deliberate uh, design. Okay, to infect uh, Muslims which, with catfish, okay, which uh, I mean, have, have 
uh, eaten um, the remains of uh, swine okay, as their uh, food. So these are some instances okay, of dehumanizing uh, labeling. And this psychology of disgust even affects community spirit, which uh, they themselves are discriminated. The Chinese are discriminated, for instance, okay, in, uh, in the Middle East, in Africa, in uh, Europe and uh, in America. But back in China, even Chinese have been uh, accused of uh, discriminating against the uh, blacks. And look at this uh, cartoon, okay, uh, for instance. And this, a prop, this is an example of India. And you can look at this. Um, uh, there's actually a list in Wikipedia now of the incidents of xenophobia and racism. But I'll, I'll, I'll urge you also to uh, look at the report by Desai and Amara Singham on Corona Jihad. So Muslims have been uh, accused of waging Corona Jihad. Look at the cartoon on the right. Previously, it was uh, uh, bombs, now it's uh, viruses, okay, and the cartoon on the left, the allegations again against uh, okay, Muslims of pushing, uh, wanting to push him secularism in India to uh, the uh, edge. And what do we have here in uh, Malaysia, although not reaching yet, okay, the level of genocide, we have the hatred uh, spewed okay, against the Rohingya Muslims, by fellow Malay Muslims, okay, and and in fact, okay, some of the people rounded up, okay, and then um, uh, put in immigration uh, centers of uh, detention were actually tourists, okay, tourists who mean uh, whose visa ran out, okay, because of the MCO, okay, and because the a lot of flights were cancelled. So we can just uh, imagine if, if this happens to uh, us uh, overseas. So in terms of uh, the uh, solution, I'd like to refer okay, uh, I mean, all of us to uh, this article on the shadow pandemic, what I was saying at the beginning, okay, that the shadow pandemic, psychological or societal injuries that come along with a physical pandemic Okay, it can be even more ven venomous okay, to the well-being of a society and the population. And in fact, uh, Venkat Mani, who's a professor of literature at University of Wisconsin Medicine okay, in the USA, what he says here is that now this shadow pandemic, okay, which is more lethal, more dangerous than the actual COVID pandemic, is proliferating. Okay, proliferating by the seconds through Facebook, Zoom, WhatsApp, Twitter. So is there any hope, okay, for us, uh, for us, uh, and unfortunately, okay, normally for, for, for any educational, uh, I mean, uh, revolution or educational scheme, I would look at the philosophy. Okay? And philosophy, uh, I think studying it is, uh, very uh, important because uh, we can actually uh, discover know the actual uh, meaning okay, of a uh, uh, thing. Okay. But unfortunately, okay, even Western philosophy, which, have, which has uh, nurtured or produced uh, leaders, figures, a lot of it underlying it, especially those that emerged during colonial times, are very racist. Okay, and, and many of us might not realize it because many of us are, are ourselves educated in the West and we imbibe things educationally okay, without, um, without giving proper attention to details. Okay, apart from wanting to pass exams and so on. I myself okay, was a philosophy student who graduated from uh, the West. Okay, and I'll refer you to a, a good article by Van Norden here that Western philosophy is racist. It neglects other philosophical traditions. Indian tradition, Islamic tradition, Chinese tradition, okay, and so on. And what has this uh, produced in the history of mankind, racist figures, even Immanuel Kant, uh, Van Norden here quotes, uh, what Kant has said about these other non-white races and why they are less equipped to build a civilization. 
and he and produce uh, people like Churchill uh, and even Kipling and Kipling the one who in, uh, poet who invented a white man's burden was actually quoted okay by uh, Brenton Tarrant the New Zealand white supremacist of the um, in Christchurch uh, massacre notoriety okay and a bit on Churchill uh, what are some of his uh statements which are thoroughly racist okay against the pashtuns and against the indians okay and yet in 2002 okay, this was the uh figure the politician was voted by okay, most of by the british people okay as the greatest uh Briton, okay that has uh, graced the surface of the uh earth Okay, I, this is my last uh, slide, and I will not uh, hide my uh, affection for uh, Sufism. Okay, I have uh, written uh, articles uh, on this, the conception, the movements, and so on. And I think what the world needs today is what Sufism Okay, which is the, you know, the mystical or spiritual dimension of, of uh, Islam is love or in Arabic mawadda or mahabba. Uh, there's too much hate okay, in uh, our lives and the strength of Sufism, I think, okay, is that it advocates okay, a reciprocal love between God and humanity. Okay, and I've got several, I've got two quotes here. Okay, from the Quran 548, and Allah will, you could have made you one community, but uh, you go to the Quran and look at the uh, ayat, okay, uh, which is very uh, inclusive, okay, and yet uh, neglected okay, or uh, brushed aside by, uh, mean, by extremists. And community here means people of different uh, mean, uh, ethnicities, religions, and so on. And look at this uh, hadith, okay, which was uh, related by uh, Tabrani, okay, which uh, says that uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be uh, upon him, okay, once um, told the companions, but okay, that it, it, faith here refers to Iman okay, in, in Arabic, and you are not faithful until you mutually love one another, not just among ourselves. Okay, but this is this refers to love of all humankind and his creatures or makhluk. Okay, so I think these are just uh, two I mean uh, evidence from uh, the scripture from the Quran and, and hadith. I think it's very important that lessons that we learn from the scripture, especially pertaining to akhlaq or the signs of the heart. We are externalized out in the open and not just to our fellow um, uh, co religionists or if in, in the case of Muslims, just for Muslims. But this must extend okay, even for, okay, even to our uh, non Muslim brothers who are our brothers in uh, humanity. And I think this is uh, something very uh, important, especially speaking on the platform of the Islamic Renaissance uh, front. Okay, so this is something which I found on the internet, okay, the akhlaq uh, manusia dalam Al-Quran, and how the uh, morality can actually be uh, practiced, okay, can actually be uh, practiced um, in, uh, openly or uh, practically okay, in terms of extending love Okay, to uh, one another to fellow human beings. Okay, and with that, I end my uh, presentation and I'll give the uh, screen uh, back to Esan.